everyone to the AMAC. Today is going to be the painting tutorial of Jesus knocking at the door. And we are going to finish this one up. And next weekend, you are all going to get to see it in a frame. So, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. And if you like this channel and like what we're doing here at the AMC, be sure to hit that like button and ring the bell so you'll be sent those notifications and you won't miss a thing. So, last uh, weekend and the weekend before last, we worked on the blocks over here. And uh, we put a highlight in over here. And it is dried and it looks very, very nice. And you can see up here where we had worked on uh, the lemon yellow and contrasting it over to the yellow oak. And putting in our green here to darken in this picture because in case any of you missed last uh, weekend's uh, painting tutorial the weekend before that, um, we have been working on the blocks, the tree limbs, and just a little bit over here on the road. And I went ahead and I'm going to show everyone something um, about the lines up here for the window. Uh, I went ahead and put those in. And for those of you who are new with your painting, you can use an index card and it works quite wonderfully. And just, you know, lay it up there and bring in your um, burnt umber or whichever color you prefer to use and, and then turn it this way and that way and you'll get those straight lines. But remember here on the window, the line does not go straight across. It does go at an angle. So with that being said, today we are going to, I guess you all have noticed up here, I have added some a green leaf up here and we're just going to be adding in some green leaves. First, we're going to start off with the tree branches. Bring in some green foliage up here. And so it just sort of blends, you know, and we don't have that sharp edge up there. And I want everyone to be sure to tune in next week for the painting tutorial. Um, we are going, I'm going to talk to everyone who is specifically doing oil as your medium. And I'm going to go ahead and start these tree branches. And they don't have to be straight, of course. We kind of want them to have a bend. Make them look more real. And then we're going to go in with our green foliage. But again, back to what I was saying concerning uh, next week's show, be sure to stay tuned to all of the oil painters out there. If you are using this one product, and I cannot say yet till you will all just find out on next week's show. I've got several, many reasons why you need to absolutely quit using this product because it seems so harmless, but yet when you're using oil, I would like to let some people know who do oil paintings to stop doing this too. And it's some good information. I have many reasons.
reasons why you should absolutely not use this product when painting. I like to tell people to have, you know, great painting experiences, but I also want all of the new beginners out there painting and perhaps some who have been painting for years already, you know, I want you to be safe. Enjoy painting and be safe at the same time. So, you don't want to miss that next week. And we have a guest on today's show. The gentleman I mentioned last weekend. He is going to make some beautiful, gorgeous wire crosses, and they are just gorge. And he is going to be here shortly, and so excited to have him on the show today. Now, I want to come in. some leaves and again they don't have to be perfect because there's going to be some more shading happening in here start fat at the top and just sort of slow down at the end and make a little point or tail so you are really defining that that is a leaf in fact. If you feel comfortable start now and then come up here at the top with your leaves. as well. Again, I had so much access paint over here. I'll just bring another leaf on over here to the other side. Now, I think everyone gets the idea here on the foliage that I'm going to be adding and I will be doing the same over here, of course, too, as well. And I want to go ahead and I have a few announcements. That's going to conclude today's painting tutorial. So, stand back there. Okay, you, know, you, you mash your cord. Push your cord. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed today, this weekend's painting tutorial. And again, if you like this channel, be sure to hit that like button and ring the bell so you'll be sent those notifications and you don't miss a thing. So, I hope everyone enjoyed today's painting tutorial on Jesus knocking at the door. That's just about going to wrap that one up. And next weekend, you're all going to get to see it in the frame, which I already have. And I have a quick uh, few announcements um, for the giveaway for the free prize in the month of December. That deadline has been moved to December 4th because uh, they have told me that they want to announce the winner on the 5th instead of December 10th as originally planned. That has been changed, of course. So the entry 
The deadline, I mean, deadline to get that entry in is December 4th. The winner will still be announced here on the show. Uh, we will do the drawing, and everyone will get to hear who the winner is once the name is drawn. And we want to allow plenty of time to get uh, the prize mailed out to the lucky subscriber. And again, you do have to subscribe to the channel to be able to be eligible to receive your chance to win the prize for the month of December. So, uh, today's guest is one that makes um, crosses. They're absolutely gorgeous. And here is a quick little picture. He is on the way. He's not quite arrived here yet. I'm just going to lay it down there. So the camera can see these beautiful crosses that he makes. And this is what I call um, wire art. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, magnificent. And he is going to show you all today how to make these beautiful wire crosses. And he does have them for sale. He sells them to lots of people all over the United States and you can contact me at amossart1876 at gmail.com if you would like to order you one of the crosses and that is if you don't have luck after today's show um, after he shows you how to make them so, uh, one other thing I forgot to mention last weekend, uh, we are going to have print soon available on the Jesus Knocking at the Door painting and the one up here on the wall that is the logo for the channel here at the AMAC. And uh, if the cameraman could just turn to the right over here and zoom in on those prints, we're going to have those two available on this painting soon. And I don't know the price yet. Uh, just stay tuned for our future shows here at the AMAC on those. And they would make a wonderful Christmas gift. And also, if the cameraman could go straight behind me to the shepherd picture um, back there, or just bring it around to the front. Yes, thank you, my camera assistant there. Uh, these are going to be available also in print as well. In any size that you prefer, I am going to have my standard sizes that I will offer. For example, the one that he just done of on the wall of Jesus wearing the purple robe overlooking Jerusalem. That one will be the actual size of the print. So, be sure uh, if you want to get that family member or special friend or loved one or someone at your church or just someone in general they would make an excellent christmas gift with the holidays soon approaching so uh i believe that was it on uh all of the announcements and my secretary has just told me that our guest has arrived to the show. He's waiting right outside the door. So, um, he, uh, yes, come on in. Come on in. It's uh, so wonderful to have you here at the AMAC. Come on in and sit down. We've got you a chair here.
have a seat there. Now, this is our guest, the gentleman I have uh, told you about. We have had you booked since April, and due to the COVID, we're just now getting him on the show. So, he is going to show everyone today about his crosses that he makes, and... Uh, later, after the show, I always have my guests stay and have something delicious and healthy that I have cooked up here in the kitchen at the AMAC. So, everyone stay tuned. This is a wonderful show that we're about to start with the uh, crosses, and we'll just go ahead and dive right on in. And... Tell us, uh, uh, how long have you been making these? Uh, about 40 years, 40 years I've been making these. I was focusing on tools and the uh, things that you'll need. Uh, you'll need some uh, needle nose pliers. I, I've got some for different kinds of wire and some uh, okay. snappers. And if you could hold the needle nose pliers up for everyone. Two kinds, and both of them are pretty small. So one of them stronger than the other for different kinds of wire, uh, whether it be uh, gold wire or silver wire. Uh, you can get 14 karat gold, sterling silver. Uh, this is uh, a silver, uh, it's not fully silver, it's got nickel in it, but I want to use this to uh, show how to make these. Uh, first of all, you need. Silver, or silver wire, so whatever kind of wire you can get, wire at Walmart, and whatever you want to use, if you want some wires. Oh, and by the way, if anyone needs any wire directly ordered, uh, they can do that. Contact me at Amanda Moss Art 1876 gmail.com, and we'll be happy to mail you some out. And I'm going to show you how to bend these. You have to, there's two, two sets. You, you have an inner layer and an outer layer. This is your inner layer. is the one that requires the most bends. Uh, you start out with about, uh, I like to go about one, two, three. Three lengths of the thickness of the uh, pliers, which isn't too much. If you've got a uh, three-eighths inch, you're going to have just three times three-eighths or whatever. And then, either way, it doesn't matter, left or right. And then, bend it another time. Um, we'll just do it one, one leg, so it's easier to measure. That way, you bend it down towards your last bend, then you have a mark. It's best to put a mark on your pliers. I have a little marks down here. I don't know if you can see them, but that way, whenever you bend, you're bending the same. Perhaps some white fingernail polish yeah. could be effective. And you just bend the same. If you slide it up and down, you're going to get a different, different bend on each one. But anyways, when you're all done, that's just an example of the you know how that works, but when y'all done, it's going to look like this. Uh, but before it looks like this, you have to put the outer layer that I've already pre bent. Brought another wire, there's not much to this. You just take and measure the, the length of uh, your first bend past, you want to go past, and then you just start. Bend in there and then you flip it around. You go past the point here, probably half an inch, and you bend again, opposite. And you just take and go opposite back. And then you come up here and you squeeze both of them together so you know where your bend is going to be. You bend up, then you go up. 
also, everyone, you can contact me at amandamossart1876 gmail.com if you would like to purchase a cross already made. Just a little helpful information there. And the prices vary in sizes, of course. Scott down here bones equally, so that when you match, that they, they meet up equally. So that when we wrap, you wrap your wire, you know, there's a small wire to connect it together. Put these two together like this. And you gotta, when you wrap it, you gotta wrap it tight. And your end result is this, and this is just a, a, a one, finish. one finish. So you make them bigger or smaller, uh, uh, you get them in stone, silver, 14 karat gold filled. Whatever the uh, customer prefers when they order. Or whatever you want. You can make all of those. But you, that's how you make them. If you want to make them, you, Walmart has some pretty nice colors. And, uh, but their prices are not near as cheap as yours. I'm not just bragging, but they absolutely are. I have a gold one for, that I keep in my Bible, everyone, that he made for me. I've been making them about four years off and on. You know, they're fun to make. I've made them. Probably close to 2,000 of them. Maybe not that many. Give or take a couple hundred. Well, they are I absolutely gorgeous. It. God bless you. And uh, y'all subscribe to Amanda's channel. Yes. And uh, next time I'll show you about, about the meteor rod I found. Uh, yes, so stay tuned for tomorrow's uh, this weekend show. Uh, we are going to have a, it's on a computer over there. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And for being on the show, I understand you have an important, important engagement. Sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to take this up. Okay, well, you just wait. We're going to have some delicious oh, okay. bone broth soup. Thank you very much. And um, uh, we are going to uh, indulge in that here in a little while. Anyone who's a guest on my show is definitely going to have a healthy, organic, non-GMO meal here at the AMAC studio. We have a small kitchen here, and... I'm always wanting to have something warm and uh, nice to cozy up with on a rainy weekend, and I hope you all have enjoyed today's show, and there are many more to come. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, we have another guest, perhaps, next weekend, weather permitting, he uh, grills. He is a grilling expert. He loves to grill. It's, he's passionate about it. And there is an art to cooking and grilling as well. So, as you all well know, who grill steaks, you know how important that temperature is on the grill. So, weather permitting, uh, we're going to try to schedule him in. He, wants to be on the show is so glad that he does and so glad that we finally got to have a gentleman today on the show and uh the bone broth i want to tell everyone it's a recipe that my cousin uh got me to making and she had told me how to make it and you cook down you can use chicken or beef and it's hard to find beef Bones, but we had some T-bone steak the other day, and it was absolutely delish. So I saved those bones and put them in the refrigerator. And I've been cooking my bone broth for a little over 12, nearly 13 hours, which typically you want it to cook 18 hours. 
I like to go over that. That's just me. So you get that bone marrow and that good collagen. And I can't stress this enough. You know, collagen creams and products with collagen are very important for our outer skin, but it's also very important to have that internally because it's good for the digestive system and can help with the aging from within. And all those good, healthy things that we have inside our bodies and good fresh herbs have a lot of anti-aging properties as well. And that will be reflected outwardly when we are nice and healthy within. And also, uh, something I recently discovered a few months ago, I have not told today's guest that, um, and hopefully he won't taste any, but sprinkle ginger on your meat, especially red meat. I eat red meat occasionally. And it keeps the, it helps with the rotting of the red meat because when we consume red meat, it literally has to rot in our gut. So the ginger will aid in the fat absorbing into the colon and the intestines while the red meat is breaking down slowly. So with that said, um, I'm looking forward to a delicious bowl of that bone broth and I will try to get a link of, of the recipe so all of you at home will have it too. So, I hope, again, you enjoyed today's show, and if you liked it, be sure to hit that like button and ring the bell so you'll be sent those notifications and you don't miss a thing. So, until we meet again, may God bless you and God keep you.